The PlayStation 4 Slim recently came out, and you might be wondering what the differences are between it and the original PS4. I'm here to explain. The underlying specs of the Slim are largely the same as the original PlayStation 4 model. This means you shouldn't expect to see an increase in graphical performance, but there are some notable differences worth pointing out. The most noticeable one is that the PS4 Slim is, well, slimmer. Its 11 by 10 by 1.5 inch chassis is actually smaller in every dimension compared to the original's 12 by 10 by 8.2 inch case. It's also 1.6 pounds lighter, weighing 4.6 pounds. The Slim also has rounded corners. Yeah, it kind of loses its edgy look here, and you can argue that it looks a little boring, but it also has a simple and clean aesthetic. There are some under the hood improvements as well. The Slim now supports 5GHz Wi-Fi, which is generally faster than the 2.4GHz wireless band of the original console, provided you have a modem that can take advantage of it. The Slim also now supports Bluetooth 4.0, which is more power efficient and offers better wireless audio performance. Finally, the Slim supports USB 3.1, which is up to two times as fast as the original's 3.0 ports. Speaking of USB, the two ports in the front are spread out a little further this time around. The hardware is also a little more power efficient overall. Whereas the original PS4 is rated to consume 250 watts, the Slim features a 165 watt TDP. Its more power efficient design allows it to run a bit cooler and quieter as a result. On the front of the console, you'll notice that the light bar has been removed. In its place is a tiny dotted LED, which sits atop the physical power button. To the right is the eject button. On the back side of the unit is a removable cover that allows you to access the storage drive, in case you ever wanted to swap out the HDD. On the bottom of the Slim are little rubber feet that take the shape of the PlayStation button logos. If the Slim does have one drawback over the original, it's the removal of the SPDIF port. This can be annoying if you were planning on connecting a sound bar to the system that uses an optical audio connection. On the bright side, some small improvements were made to the controller. There is now a light bar at the front of the touchpad, and the controller now works in wired mode when it's physically plugged in. This will allow you to avoid wireless interference, and it also mitigates controller latency. The Slim doesn't make a ton of improvements over its original incarnation. If you already own a PS4, it doesn't make much sense to get the Slim. Furthermore, if you want a more powerful PlayStation, we suggest you wait for the Pro model in November. Regardless, the Slim still represents a marked improvement over the original with its new, svelte design. For more PlayStation coverage, head on over to GameSpot.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel.